This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is New England Patriots kicker and former Memphis Tiger, Stephen Gostowski. It was pretty apparent to the New England Patriots back in 2006 that Stephen Gostowski was going to be a top flight NFL kicker. Why? Well, they took Gostowski in the fourth round of the NFL draft, rarefied air for a place kicker. At the University of Memphis, the young man affectionately known as Gotti would go on to break record after record. In fact, his career 369 points would rank in 13th on the all-time Division I-A scoring list. Now, after being drafted by the Pats, Gotti would have to beat out veteran Martin Gramatica for the job, which he did. The rest is history. Three NFL scoring titles, two trips to the Pro Bowl, an All-Pro selection, and two appearances in the Super Bowl. And there is plenty more big kicks left in that right leg of his. Today, Stephen Gostowski joins me to talk about the Pats' chances this season and about his career to date, a career that has placed him among the elite place kickers of all time. It's next on Sports Files. Gotti, it's great to see you again. How you been? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I, I know you come here in the summer for a short time before you head back up to New England. How's the family? It's growing. I know that. Yeah, I got two two little boys now, four and uh, one years old, and they they love it down here. It's a little too hot for them and the dogs sometimes, but it stinks. We got to be up in New England during the cold and down here during the heat. So <laughs> maybe maybe I can switch that around one of these days. Kids keep you busy. A whole different perspective on life now, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Makes makes going to work a lot easier. You know, have something. Um, really more important than, than football at home and makes uh, all the what I uh, what I uh, think is a struggle or a daily complaint or something that could happen mm -hmm. at, at practice or at work uh, doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. You're ending your ninth year in the NFL. Has the time just breezed by or not? Uh, I, I would say yeah. I mean I've had a lot of things happen. Got married, had kids, you know, moved away from uh, the south and um, I've had, you know, mostly um, large majority of my career has been successful. There's been a few hiccups in the road as there is in anybody's athletic uh, career. Uh, and we've won a lot of games, which helps and, you know, haven't quite uh, closed it out and won the big one. But we're in contention every year and we're in the playoffs almost every year, which makes the, uh, the seasons go by really fast. And when you're doing well, it just flies by. Uh, and sometimes, you know, the days go by really slow when you're struggling. But mm -hmm. um, luckily with my position, if you struggle too much, they just cut you. So, you know, if you're around, you're doing something good. Well, I think you're modest because you're certainly one of the most prolific kickers to ever play the game. It is pretty amazing when you look at the Patriots. Adam Benatari, Steven Gostowski, that's been it for so many years. We were talking before we started taping this. There are teams that go through four or five kickers in a year yep. when they're struggling. So that's pretty amazing. Well, you know, a lot, lot goes into that. You know, you find one, you kind of want to keep them. Um, and sometimes, uh, depending on where a team is in that season, they don't have time to wait around and give the guy proper enough, uh, enough time to really settle in. Because it's tough to come in as a, as a rookie in any position, let alone one where you only get a couple of screw-ups a year right. uh, to do well. And mentally, it's just a tough position to be at. Um, you know, I've seen guys that are really talented that just can't handle it mentally, and then there's guys like me who are too dumb to know any, any better. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's it's nice. I, I struggled a little bit my my rookie year, but not anything that cost us games. And I got to work through it, and the team always showed a lot of confidence in me. And um, and I think that helps out a lot. You see some of these teams where. You know, the, the kicker misses one kick, and they're quick to point the finger and right. think that's the only thing that's keeping them from winning games, which, you know, it takes a lot more than one player 
no matter what position, to win games. So, How long did it take, once you were in the NFL with the Patriots, to become, you know, part of the gang? You were... Oh, you were opened with, you know, open arms and, and warm hearts, and they said, all right, Steven, you're, you're part of us now. I'm sure it took a little time before you got that. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're told the first couple of days, especially when you're a rookie, don't try to run with the veterans. I mean, they have, a lot of them have kids, they have wives, they, you know, have millions upon millions of dollars, and you come in and you can't just jump in and expect to be accepted right away. Um, so I think it's something that's got to be earned naturally. You can't just force it upon people. And uh, I went in with the attitude, the attitude is if people are either going to like me or they're not. And, right. Um, you know, after my rookie year, I pretty much felt accepted by m most everybody. I mean, it took a while. I mean, there's a lot of intimidating people on the team when I first got there <laughs> with, you know, Tom Brady, uh, Teddy Bruschi, Mike Vrabel, Richard Seymour. Uh, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. Well, I mean, we, me and Bill don't hang out too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but, you know, I, I made a lot of really good friends up there. And, you know, I, I've always wanted people to get to know me for me and not because uh, I kick or do anything else. And, right. and I feel like I've, I've made a lot of friends that way. Not to mention you follow Adam Venateri. And you follow a guy who was adored and did so many great things for the Patriots. So you talk about pressure. You're drafted in the fourth round, which is very rare for a kicker anyway. And you said that you were a little surprised by that. So you would think that there would be natural pressure, but you really handled that well, and the rest is history so far in your career. But that was big shoes to fill uh, to jump right in there after Adam Benatieri uh, and replace him. Yeah, I think it's pressure enough just to be in the NFL. Uh, so, and I, I don't know if anyone's ever put more pressure on me than myself. Right. I've, I've always been my own worst enemy, my own worst critic. I get more upset at myself if I uh, screw up or have a bad play than anyone else in the stands or in the media could ever, you know. And I don't even listen to what anybody says, good or bad, mm -hmm. uh, about my football career because it just it doesn't do any better. I know when I'm doing well, and um, if people talk nice about me, I kind of it can you can tend to get a big head about it. And then if you know people are talking bad about you, you get, you get ticked off. You want to go out and prove everybody wrong. And I just feel like that's a distraction that I don't need. And if I focus on just making kicks and helping the team win, then I'm doing doing it right, and that's what I've tried to stress. And the team puts you, sets you up in a good mm -hmm. situation. I mean, as you know, New England isn't. We're not looking to read every uh, media outlet and read every story that's written about us. We don't. You know, no offense to the writers, but you know, we're not. They're not basing the game plan off what the people in the Boston Globe say. Where right. we worry about what we need to do and our job, and everything else takes care of itself. From the media standpoint, on the outside looking in, you always hear stories about, wow, in the NBA, the Spurs have the best organization, without question. In, the, in Major League Baseball, the Cardinals. <laughs> in the NFL, we always hear about the Patriots way. I mean, how great of an organization is it? And that's the only organization you've known. I don't know any different, but it's, it's such a great place to be. And Mr. Kraft, I can't imagine there being a more personable owner and someone who truly cares about his players and mm -hmm. um you know guys got more money than he, he knows what to do with <laughs> i mean all those owners do sure and you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about him he called me uh, after i had my kids you know he called me after i had a surgery called my wife had a surgery one time you know wow. just he for a, for and especially in a place in a profession where there's a lot of turnover we have you know 15 20 30 new guys on the team every year i think he does a really good job of balancing professionalism and personalism and um, I could imagine playing for a better owner and you know coach Belichick's the best coach ever I mean I I can't I, I don't know never been around another head coach that has seemed to have all his stuff together and have his hands tied in every little thing that goes on in the organization but how, how different if he is different how different is he in the clubhouse behind closed doors as his persona meeting the press and talking after a game well, I mean, he's, I mean, he is kind of what you see is what you get. He is all business. If it doesn't have to do with football, you know, he's probably not going to sit there and talk about it. But right. there's a lot more stuff that goes into football, like, uh, you know, working hard, staying out of trouble, all these things, what to do on a daily basis. And, um, you know, he's a very, very funny guy. He just has a, so he is. So he he's has joking a, around. He has a dry sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, uh, you know, he's just very businesslike. And, 
you know, there's some times where he ha he has to keep it light, and he does a good job of that. But you know, 95 percent of the time, it's 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 all business, it's all all football, and he keeps the guys on a, on a straightened path. And, and I think that's a, he does a really good job of that. Eight years in the NFL, about to start your ninth, as I mentioned. You've been to two Super Bowls. You've played in two Super Bowls, two Pro Bowl games, three times NFL scoring leader, named an All Pro kicker. I would imagine the only thing missing from the resume is to complete the deal and to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's the one thing that I could look back at and have any regrets. I mean, I could stop playing now and be happy with what we did, but it is a team game. And to be so close so many times, you know, I played in an AFC Championship game, I think, five times. Wow. So we've been close, and it's a lot of heartache. And sometimes it's tough to get yourself up for that next season to get close and always keep coming close. But... You know, we have such a good organization, a good team, and we always seem to have a chance. And we don't look to, you know, we don't come in day one and say, we got to win the Super Bowl or else. Like, let's just get better today. Mm -hmm. Let's work hard and get ready for that first game. And I think that helps us out to, to help us with being consistent and not setting unattainable goals. I mean, everybody has the same goal to win, um, but you're not going to see guys for the New England Patriots go out there and say, I'm going to be the best so-and-so, you know, to ever play gotcha. a game or we're going to win 15 games or it's going to be a disappointing season. We just don't – we don't operate like that. We just worry about, you know, the Dolphins, which is our first game. Is Brady pretty down to earth? Yeah, Brady's Brady's a really good guy. He's he's kind of like Coach Belichick, all business. Like, he is mm -hmm. one of the hardest workers I've ever seen and been around. And, um, you know, he has a he has a good sense of humor too, and he's a, he's a good guy. And – you know, if he's talking, he's usually talking to his linemen or his receivers, trying to get guys make sure they're in the right place. And he is very competitive, and he is not afraid to uh, tell people that you know he controls on the offense when they're not doing the, the right right thing. How much did your teammates love when? And and let, I'm testing my 52 year old memory here. <laughs> you made a big tackle in the Super Bowl, right? Did you make a big tackle in a playoff game? I made a couple tackles in the one playoff game. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when you make a tackle, when a kicker gets out there, and we know you're a bigger guy and you're more you're a little bit different than the prototypical kicker. How much do they get into that? It depends. I mean, you know, they – I don't know. They don't some, think you're some, crazy, don't no, you? No, sometimes they, they, get, they get hyped up and sometimes they don't. But I think the guys know that they know that I can at least get – you know, get in the way, you know. Uh, so <laughs> I've got like 23, 24 career tackles. That's incredible. So. But – we do kick off a lot. We score, you know, there's a time we were scoring five, six, seven touchdowns a game. Right. And, you know, to we've always had good cover scenes, but covering like seven, eight kicks a game, you know, sometimes they might break one out to like the 40 and I'll be there to, you know, tackle them or push them out of bounds. I mean, if I push them out of bounds, it counts as a tackle. There so. you go. But I, I've had a couple good ones in my name and, yeah, they – they, they get they get excited, but they <laughs> you know if I if I miss one they're not like oh come on man right they don't yeah. expect that from the but, kicker but hey you know open field tackling is tough and some of the best athletes in the world can't even do it so I just try to get as close to the sideline as possible. What's your biggest kick so far in your career? Uh, I don't I mean it's hard to say. I, I would say my my whole rookie playoff. Okay. Uh, you know I went eight for eight with the game winner uh, against San Diego. And that, that really just showed me that I, I, I could do it. And, you know, um, anyone can be successful in, in different situations. And, you know, the, the pressure was put on big time my rookie year in the playoffs because they're like, oh, you did okay. And then well, what's he going to do right. in the playoffs? And everybody was looking for me to, you know, puke down my leg. <laughs> so that, that really showed me that I belonged and that, right. that I could do it. And, you know, they're all big. You know, you're, you're – Two, three, four misses away from, you know, looking for a job. Unemployment. So it's right. always the next kick that's, that's the biggest one. And I, I've, you know, I've 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 had a, a decent, um, you know, percentages in in, in like fourth decent. quarter and stuff like yeah. that. But I don't look at them as really any differently. Uh, You're pretty even keel out there. I mean, you know, you can pretty much tell even from watching it on television that that you are that, uh, you know, you don't get too excited. You're 30 years of age, which is still obviously very young. But in football years, it's, it's starting to get up there. Physically, yeah. do you still feel the same? Is it the same regiment? You still uh, feel like you were when you were 21, 22, 23? We have to alter it a little bit. I, I'm definitely stronger and in my prime, so to speak. Right. But, I, you know, it takes a lot longer to recover, a lot longer to get going. Uh, I used to just show up and be able to, you know, 
run and work out and kick and do whatever for days. And now, you know, it's almost like a little regimen to get yourself <laughs> going. And, you know, you wake up in the morning, you feel a little bit, your back hurts a little bit, right, your knees right. hurt a little bit. And, and when you do something like kicking and you do it millions and millions of times, you know, you tend to have an overuse thing. It's kind of like when I pitch and play baseball, your arm gets tired eventually. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I would say I feel just as good, if not better, at this age. And I, I, I definitely take better care of myself now than I did, you know, mm -hmm. five, six, seven years ago. You know, you could always do better. Um, it just takes a little longer to get going. I think that's it. But definitely stronger than I've ever been. And give, give me, give me twenty seconds on the prospects for this year for all the Patriots fans out there. For Clifford over here on the camera, a big Patriots fan. You going to be back in the race? I mean, we like, we we hope so. We always feel like we have a decent chance. And you know, like I said, we take it game by game. Um, but we got a lot of a lot of guys returning, and you know we had a really good year last year, um, considering the amount of you know all pro Pro Bowl type players that we had injured, like Gerard right. Mayo, Vince Wilfork, Rob Gronkowski. Um, with those guys coming back, and the addition of guys like Darrell Revis and Brandon Browner um, and Tommy Kelly, um, and the, you know the offense is always going to be the offense with with Tom Brady. A lot of it comes down to just you know execution and you know staying staying healthy and a lot of luck plays into it as well and right. um you know with with coach belichick at the helm i always feel like we're going to have a shot so steven we like to end every interview with something called five for the road so first thing that comes to mind five quick questions for you what's your favorite professional team you can't say the patriots spurs spurs favorite pro athlete of all time uh federer really huh. Heck of a match he had recently. I didn't get to Wimbledon. see it. I was on the plane. Let's see. Uh, favorite music? What do you listen to? Yeah, I, I like it all. I like a lot of old school rock. So, do you like to listen before a game? Yeah, I do. Yeah, not, I don't. I don't like pump up music for a game because I try to stay, you know, even keel. Even keel so. Right. Uh, favorite movie of all time? Uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Huh? Okay. Favorite TV show? Uh, uh, it's tough. I like. I mean, there's a lot of good ones out now. Breaking Bad was pretty good. Sure. Now it's going. Seinfeld. Oh, yeah, you watch all the reruns all like the reruns. I do? Seinfeld. Uh, uh, Anything there's, current? There's, uh, current, Walking Dead's pretty good. Would you like Hard Knocks to come to New England? No. It'd be would, a pain, would, would that, be a pain would that in the Would that change butt. things a little bit, like how you have to conduct yourself? Yeah, I mean, you just don't want to. I, you, I wouldn't want to be on national TV saying something stupid to embarrass myself or my family. Because you can never get rid of it. Yeah, it's going to always be out there. You know, you got to watch out what you say and. You know, they're, we're up there all day, and, you know, guys are going to act stupid. And I mean, you got to watch out what you say anyway. Um, it would just be – I think thinking about that would distract you from actual I got the you. practice. I got you. Right. Well, you've done nothing to embarrass yourself. In yeah. fact, the pride <laughs> of the University of Memphis, what you've done with New England so far. And, uh, boy, you're nine years in, but I know you got a long career still ahead of you. Stephen, thank, thank you, you so Thanks, much. Craig. An absolute pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll take a quick break. Overtime is next. So here's my question to all of you. How's your golf game? Well, I sure hope it's improved over the last six months since we introduced our Golf Made Easy segment. It's never too late to get better, and here's another way with this month's lesson from Greg King, the director of golf at Miramichi. So the last time we were together, we discussed the ability to master the depth of the divot with chipping and pitching. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about is two shots, the lob shot and the bunker shot. So very necessary shots that you're gonna have to be able to be proficient when you find yourself around the green and you've gotta use trajectory to stop the ball or if you're short-sided and the green slopes away from you, you've gotta be able to hit a high, soft shot. So one of the first things I want to talk to you about is the lob shot. A lot of people believe that it's a real risky shot. I take a different approach. I think that it's, it's one of the least riskiest shots with the highest amount of reward. So what I want to describe to you is the bounce on the club head itself. So you'll see the angle between the leading edge here and my finger. And that amount of angle is defined as bounce. So as long as I'm allowing at the hitting zone the club head to catch up to the club head where we have a vertical shaft at impact, 
the part of the club that's hitting the ground is the back edge, the bounce edge. So all my job is as a player is to allow the wrist to unhinge and the club to get below the ball. So if I were hitting this shot with a driver, when I'm coming through and my hands stay open like this, this would be a big slice. To give you another analogy, in tennis this would be like a drop volley. So what I'm allowing to happen is I'm allowing these wrists to unhinge, the club head to pass the hands, so that the part of the club that's hitting the ground, again, is the back edge, or the riding edge. So all I ask you to do is practice getting the club below the ball. As long as you're getting the club below the ball, you're going to be just fine. You just turn through. So to display this shot, I simply have the club face a little bit open to my hands. I aim my body the same amount open that the club face is open. And I go ahead and make a little swing back and through. And you'll see it's a wristy motion going through, allowing the club face to pass. That's how the lob shot works. Now let's go take a look at the bunker shot. So the bunker shot is very similar to the lob shot. You want to allow your wrist to hinge up, you allow your wrist to unhinge through, and you turn through with your upper torso. The main difference with the bunker shot versus the lob shot is you've got to take some sand. You've got to get the club below the ball. It's truthfully you never hit the ball in a greenside bunker. You take a swath of sand that the energy of the club going through the sand makes the ball propel out. One of the best practice drills you can do if you can find a greenside practice bunker is to simply draw a line in the bunker and practice hitting the sand, entering the sand about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half prior to, the, to that line. Two main things, let your arms return long, get the club below the ball, through the sand, and make sure you turn through with upper torso. So just like the lob shot, club face is a little bit open, body's similarly open. We're going to practice, see if I can hit this about an inch and a half. That was a couple inches prior to the line. So I'll do it again, and you can just some reference of where you're finding the low spot between your feet. Remember, let your arms fall long, let your body turn through, and you're always hitting the sand. One last thing, one little tip about greenside bunker shots is if you've got a short shot, you want to feel like you allow the speed of the club to dissipate in the sand. There's not a lot of follow through speed. That would look something like that. If you've got a longer greenside bunker shot, go ahead and keep your speed to a bigger follow through. If you do those two things, that'll help you with your sand play. I'll go ahead and hit one and you'll see that I'll go ahead and take some sand and turn through. That's going to help you with your sand game. So one last little tip about short game that I'd, I'd like to introduce you to. It's called the ladder drill. It's a great way to prepare for a round of golf. You simply start off hitting a short shot 10 or 15 feet, then you try to hit the second shot and land it on top of that ball, which will go out another 10, 15 feet, and you work your way up the ladder, so to speak, all the way up to about a half wedge or so. It's a really, really great way to get a sense of the energy transfer and your ability to, to master that depth of divot in shots that you're going to have around the green. So the first one I'll try to hit, oh, 10 or 15 feet. I'm just going to take a little practice swing here and hit that one about, that went about 15 feet or so. So the second one, I'm going to try to go ahead and land this ball on top of that ball. We'll see how we do. Pretty good. So that one went out about another 10 feet. And my next effort is to try to land on top of that second ball. So I'm simply just making a little bit bigger swing as we go through. Not bad, a little bit far. And we'll do one more. Just try to hit it another 10 or 15 feet past that one. Pretty good there. So what you want to see is try to get consistent increments. It's just a great way to warm up before the game. So if you'll take the time to warm up before a round of golf, this is going to help you shoot lower scores. Good golf made easy. We'll see you next time. Greg will now turn his attention to putting in our final two installments of Good Golf Made Easy. Before we say goodbye, congratulations to Chris Wallace, who earlier this week signed a new contract with the Grizzlies. 
to once again become the team's general manager after being slapped with the interim term in May. Well deserved. The Grizz also inked Ed Stefanski to a deal to become the team's new executive vice president of player personnel. Stefanski has worked in front office positions with the Nets, 76ers, and most recently, the Raptors. And that'll do it for the show. As always, you can catch any of our previous Sports Files programs by going to our website, WKNO.org, and clicking on KNO Tonight. Next week, I'll talk with Memphis Tigers head football coach Justin Fuente as the Tigers open up camp this Sunday and host their first practice on Monday. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.